going to be try number 74. We're trying to go live for the 74th time today. Hopefully I don't need a new phone, but I think maybe I do. I mean, maybe I do, maybe I don't. So this is try number 74. I have loosened up the grip on the phone, so maybe that will help. So maybe that helps. We shall see. We shall see. I need some people who I know and trust. Uh, does the sound work? Can you hear me? Is the audio working okay? Can you hear what I'm saying? Can you hear what I'm saying? I could just check and see if you could hear the audio on the other one. Can you hear what I'm saying? Can you hear what I'm saying? Hey, what's going on? So we're gonna do a, a little bit of a talk today on defining institutional racism, but more than that, we're gonna talk about what I call black fragility. And I should have put that in the title, but I didn't. So can you, can you hear me as my voice transmitting? Because I've had to turn this off twice now. I turn my phone off and on. So just let me know if you can hear me or not, and then I'll be able to move forward. Let me know, there's one person watching. Do I, can I see who's watching? Can I see who's watching? Is there one person? Because then I'll be able to tell you. Maybe it's just not my day. Um, is there any audio? Can you guys hear what I'm saying? Can anybody hear what I'm saying? Can, can you hear what I'm saying? So now this person's saying they can't hear me either, which I find to be really strange because it should work. It's super annoying. Okay, so can you, can you hear me? Can you hear when I speak? Tell me, tell me the words, or just do me a favor, just type out the words that I say. The big brown dog. Will you type that out for me? Will you type out the big brown dog? Okay, do me a favor, uh, Coronado E. Can you can you type off? Hey, can you can you just type these words for me? The big brown dog. Oh, okay. So you can hear me. The big brown dog. Okay, now type out the fox is slick. The fox is slick. Can you can you type that out for me? So the people, the guy who just came in here and said I didn't have any audio, is that a troll? Because I have hundreds of trolls. I have hundreds of trolls. Did you know that? I literally have hundreds of trolls. So then you can hear me. If I said the big brown dog and you wrote it, then you definitely can hear me. You guys do me a favor, hit your like button. I'm gonna talk today about the upcoming boo. Do you see that? Okay, but the person a second ago, Azizi7, said that they couldn't hear me. Okay, so someone earlier said just now, so now you guys understand that I literally have trolls. So that now I got that guy's name. Um, can uh, Make sure that we mark his name down because I know that that person's literally just trolling me. That's terrible, that's terrible, but I'm used to it, I'm used to it. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about today about the, yeah, the, that person literally just came in here. Make sure you guys write down his username, whoever that is. Oh man, oh man, I have hundreds of trolls, you have no idea. So I'm suing someone named Lethal Lex. I'm suing Lethal Lex. Lethal Lex has a TikTok channel. She's not very, she's not, uh, she, 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 does, she says things and does things that, creates slander. She creates slander. So I'm suing her. So I was going to talk a little bit about that because I was going to talk about if you go on Lethal Lex's channel on TikTok, I, wa I downloaded all of her videos last night where she slandered me over and over and over because uh, what I teach is the history of institutional racism and how the, the laws in this country were originally crafted against people of color and now used against every person. And it doesn't matter what color your skin is. If there's a law on the books, there's a cop ready to enforce it. So um, I want to talk a little bit about understanding institutional racism. And, and just to be clear, we cannot take on racism. Can't do it. We can take on institutional racism. We can take on legal racism that has been created through the criminal justice system. That's what we can take on. We can take on institutional racism, but we cannot take on just pure racists. It's not going to work. I come from a very tiny town and in my small town, there's no black people. And so there's a certain percentage of my tiny town that is racist and you're not gonna change that small little dynamic because there's no black people there. And so they're gonna teach their kids racism and their kids are gonna grow up racist. And so that's what's gonna happen over and over and over. 
So, but I want to give a clear definition so that you understand one. How you doing one? Good to see you, bro. Good to see you. You guys hit your like button over there. Just, just so I know that you guys can hear me. Just hit your, hit that little, that little thumbs up button right there. I can see a little thumbs up button. There's three people in here to hit that thumbs up button. And so, and so the, the trolls are going to come no matter what I do. It doesn't matter what I do. I'm always going to have a certain amount of trolls. So now when we talk about the lawsuit that I'm filing against Lethal Lex, when I went onto her live, she, she talked about white fragility. And so I went onto her channel today, last night when I downloaded all of her videos for the upcoming lawsuit against her for slander. And when I, when I went onto her channel, she has a video on there where she says that we need to take on Tennessee versus Garner. Because Tennessee versus Garner allows the police to shoot you in the back as you flee. She said, we don't need to focus on Terry versus Ohio. We need to focus on Tennessee versus Garner. Well, well, thanks, Wayne. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Well, Lethal, let me help you out a little bit. Let me help you out. Let me educate you. Tennessee versus Garner is an extension of Terry versus Ohio. You can't have Tennessee versus Garner without Terry versus Ohio. That's called stare decisis, S-T-A-R-R-Y-D-E-C-I-S-E. -R -R -E. That's called stare decisis, meaning that case precedent has to be prevalent for you to have the case of Tennessee versus Garner. Lethal Lex, you made that video and you said, I know more than you do is what you said to me. <laughs> doesn't sound like you do. It doesn't sound like you do. So now I can talk about Lethal Lex on my video as long as I tell the truth about her. Now, I made a timeline starting in January of 2021 called Defining Institutional Racism in America. That's what this timeline was originally called. It's now called the Unedited, the, the unedited History of the United States. But originally, and on my website, it says Defining Institutional Racism on a Timeline. That's what I did. That's my contribution. That's what I'm trying to do to make the world a better place. Because whether the laws were crafted against people of color or not, the laws are now being used against everybody. And so let's define institutional racism at the root core of the problem. And where is it? Where do you think the very first institutionally racist holding by the unelected Supreme Court, these guys up here, where do you think the very first institutionally racist holding, because like I said a second ago, we cannot take on people who are racist. We have to take on laws that are racist. That's how we fight institutional racism, by getting rid of the laws that are based on making sure you can arrest, cage, shackle, and hurt black people, but now it's used against all of us. And as you guys can see that, and you guys are auditors, you can see that. You saw earlier, I went through a checkpoint. Those immigration checkpoints are set up against who? Against who, right? So, so now there's tons of, there's tons of different cases that we can talk about, but if we didn't talk about Martin versus Hunter's Lisi and the 1823 case of Johnson versus McIntosh, this is the very, I mean, no, don't get me wrong. There's tons of racism, but institutional racism is when the Institute of law, the, the governing bodies of America create racist law. That's, that's Omaha, Nebraska. Where are you guys from? Where's everybody from? Type in, type in where you guys are from so I know where everybody's watching from. It kind of gives me a barometer. Are there any Americans in here? Are there any Canadians, any Australians? Just type in where you guys are watching from. Texas is in the house. Is the troll gonna chime in? The guy who said my audio didn't work again? That, that, was, that was definitely a troll, because now the troll's gone. Where are you guys at? Where are you guys watching from? Type in where you're watching from. There's nine people watching. Let me know where you guys are watching from so I can kind of have a CT Connecticut, good to see you. I was told to step out of the car because I wouldn't give them my phone number. Oh, not shocking at all. Nevada, hey, I'll be in Nevada tomorrow. I will be in Nevada tomorrow. I'll be in Nevada tomorrow for, for Thanksgiving. I'm gonna see my family for Thanksgiving. So I'll be in Nevada tomorrow. I'll be in uh, around the Las Vegas area tomorrow. So that's only three people. There's 10 people here. Where are you guys watching from? If you don't chime in, then you're probably a troll. California, California. Where's everybody watching from? Where are you guys watching from? I'm gonna give a history on understanding because this is, this. thank you, I appreciate that. This, this particular video 
is about the lawsuit that I'm filing against Lethal Lex, the, the head of the BLM chapter in Utah. This woman is, is, I mean, to me, just the most angry person I've ever seen in my life. You guys have to go and take a look. So Cal, I'm, I live in Los Angeles, I live in Southern California. So this woman named Lethal Lex on TikTok, I'm suing her. So Lethal, if you get to see this, you said you have better lawyers than me, I'm representing myself. For the past few weeks, all I've studied is defamation. That's all I've studied. I've been, because you derailed my mission of overturning Terry, so now I focused on you to get the money out of you so that I can use the money to overturn Terry, Lethal. I'm coming after you. <laughs> Guess which state I'm suing you in because I can sue you in any state in America. Guess which state I'm suing you in, Lethal? Lethal? Guess which state I'm suing you in? <laughs> You're in big trouble. You created the textual definition and you benefited from it, meaning that I get to take your money. I get to take your money because you benefited it and you affected my life and my financing. So that means I get to take your money, lethal. And I can say all these things because these are the truth. You can't call me a racist when I created a timeline said defining institutional racism in America because that creates a straw man of me and that's to your benefit. I, record, I downloaded all the videos last night. Th this woman, let me tell you how intelligent she is. So here's how, a, here's how a, a slander lawsuit works. There are five points of contention that you must understand if you're gonna file a defamation lawsuit against someone, okay? Number one, they have to create a narrative about you that is fundamentally false. Now to call someone a racist, you could probably get away with that with a lot of people. You could probably get away with that with a lot of people. However, I have 100 hours of video defining institutional racism in the United States of America. So if you call me a racist and you've seen my channel lots of times and I have a DM from you inviting me to Utah to teach the history of institutional racism and then you call me a racist, we know that that is not, that, that is, um, the definition is I-I-E-D, intentional infliction of emotional distress. That's what you did, that's what you did. And, and you hurt my life and my business, so that's why I'm suing you. That's why I'm suing you. And so one of the metrics to suing someone is the question is, did they benefit by slandering you? So Lethal Lex makes a bunch of videos about me on her channel, and then the next video she goes, oh my God, I've gained 14,000 followers this month. Meaning Lethal, that's to your benefit. Go tell your lawyers. Go tell your lawyers, you're in trouble. <laughs> So if you want to define and understand why I teach institutional racism, because that's the only racism we can actually tackle, we can actually change the laws. Now, we won't be able to change Martin versus Hunter's Lisi or Johnson versus McIntosh. And so this is going to go back. So, so Martin versus Hunter's Lisi, this is where the, 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 the easier, easier, easier to describe is going to be Johnson versus McIntosh. Because here, both Johnson and McIntosh are trying to sell land, right? This is very easy to understand. Both Johnson and McIntosh are trying to sell land. Now, they both bought land from Native American Indians. And so I, 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 think, I think McIntosh ends up losing. Or it doesn't matter, but here's the point. So they both are selling land that they had bought from Native American Indians. However, the government had came in and said, we take ownership of these lands using the doctrine of discovery from 1455. So when Johnson and McIntosh both try to sell land, they tell them, they go, well, no, no, only this person can sell the land because we were the rightful owners of the land as the federal government, and that's based on the doctrine of discovery, which is fundamentally racist based on, uh, I believe it's Pope Alexander X, or is, it, is, that, is that correct? Good to see you, Arizona. And so what they say here in this case is that from the doctrine of discovery of 1455, the founding fathers, because they have conquered this land, meaning that they now have rightful ownership of all the land and all of the inhabitants. All of the inhabitants are now slaves to the new ownership. I swear to God, that's what it says. That's the doctrine of discovery. I'm kind of pulling a blank on whether it's Pope Alexander or it's, which Pope is that? Which Pope is that? Look that up for me. 1455 doctrine of discovery, which Pope was that? God bless it. God bless it. So anyway, so, so right here, this is, this is the very first case of truly institutional racism. 
And if you listen to Scalia long enough, right, which I've listened to all of his interviews, I've read all of his opinions, you, you can't go back this far in time. You can't go back to 1823. The federal government, the Supreme Court won't go back this far. They just won't. And so then as you move forward in time, you start to say, well, what else is institutionally racist? And so we know that the 1896 case of Plessy versus Ferguson is institutionally racist, but that case is going to be overruled by the 1954 case of Brown versus Board of Education that's going to desegregate America. So the case has been overruled. So this is where the fight for American descendants of slavery, where they, they lose the battle because the case was overruled here, and so the institutional racism came to an end, and it, it lasted for almost 60 years, right? So now as we move forward, and this is what I was saying earlier when nobody could hear me, uh, I want to talk a little bit tonight about black fragility. Black fragility versus white fragility, right? And this is a very, very, very hairy line to walk. I'm, I'm kind of on the left and I'm kind of on the right. So I feel like I can talk about it intelligently without being too offensive. Pope, Ni ah, Nicholas, thank you so much. I appreciate that, right? The palpable bull. And by the way, there are several documents to read there. You can't start at the palpable or at the doctrine of discovery. You have to really dig in deeper. There's a lot of research there. It is not simple. There's a lot of research there. I've already done the research but I came on this late because I'm kind of triggered. I'll tell you why I'm triggered. I'll tell you why I'm triggered. Because last night, I had to download all of Lethal Lex's videos for the upcoming lawsuit. Because I'm suing her for committing slander. And all through her videos last night, she, bring, she talks about people and she calls them white fragility. Well, let's talk about black fragility. So, so in the 1985 case of Tennessee versus Garner, when I came onto Lethal Lex's channel, she said, we don't need to focus on Terry versus Ohio. We need to focus on Tennessee versus Garner that allows police to shoot you when you run away. Well, there's so much research to do there. There's so much understanding to do on Tennessee versus Garner because Tennessee versus Garner is an extension of Terry versus Ohio. But however, this man here, Harry Blackman, he was one of the original authors of the 1962 model penal code which was written from 1952 until 1959. And then we talked about the prison industry last night, 1959. They talked about using mens rea to determine why a convict or, or, or a convicted person had committed the crime. Was it negligent, willing, uh, uh, reckless? Uh, there's one more. So, 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 so that now when Harry Blackman was writing the model penal code, he, he wrote in the model penal code that cops can shoot you in the back using common law. Now, Harry Blackman's going to reverse himself in the 1985 case of Tennessee versus Garner that cops cannot shoot you in the back when you run away unless it's in the name of officer safety. So Tennessee versus Garner is like a nothing burger. Cops can shoot you in the back as long as they say they were scared for their safety. What? Yeah, that's what the holding of Tennessee versus Garner says. So Lethal Lex, when, I, when she did her videos about me, which you gotta go on TikTok and watch her videos about me, how she tries to brand me a racist. It's insane. You really made a mistake, Lex. Lexi, you're gonna have to pay for that. It's gonna cost you a lot of money. Get your lawyers ready. I'm filing a lawsuit against you. Get ready. And guess which state I'm suing her in? Guess which state I'm suing you in, Lethal? I can sue you in any state I want, but guess which one I've chosen? <laughs> Ooh, I can't wait, I'm so excited. Okay, so. So now when, when she goes on there, and so now you, do you guys understand a little bit about Tennessee versus Garner? Because my, my brain goes so fast and I have ADD. So sometimes I go super fast and people can't necessarily keep up with, with what I'm saying. Okay. So, so last night when I downloaded all her videos, she was talking to about every single, okay, cool. Clear as mud. <laughs> Thank you. So, so when, I was, when I was downloading her videos last night, I couldn't help but watch even videos that had nothing to do with me. And she was always talking about white fragility. So when this happened, uh, when this happened to me, because clearly Talib Twali, Talib the dweeb Kali, Talib the loser, right? And I can say my opinion about him. What a loser. I'm suing you too, Talib. You're on the list, brother. You're coming right up. But so, 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 <laughs> So now, when you watch Lethal Lex's videos, all she talks about is people who have white fragility. So when this happened to me, a lot of people contacted me who had also been branded a racist 
by the same little clique of people. They're actually a cult called the Fold. They're in a cult called the Fold. And that's Anthony Highland, uh, uh, T, uh, T. Nathan Locus. There's, there's like a half a dozen of them who are in a, in a cult called the Fold. You, you, can, you can find this information out. This is fact. This is truth. So I'm not committing slander or libel because this can be proven. So there's the fact. So when she talked about white fragility over and over and over, so now a lot of people came to me when this happened, when, when Lethal Lex put me on her show and called me a racist and a narcissist and all these things. So those people, some of the people who came to me after this went down, they are people of color. They're people of color. Now, the things that we're doing, you can have all, all the white fragility, my friend. <laughs> so the things that we're doing to this little group of people, is vicious. It's legal. It's all legal. I'm doing legal things to these people, right? Because they crossed the wrong guy. I, you messed up my mission. And so now I'm going to come after you legally, right? Even the people within my little clique of people who've been doing the investigating and, and researching these people, right? Even inside of my own personal little clique of people, I've, been, I've heard today that they're they are so fragile. And so what I said to this person today was, is that black fragility? Because I said, if I've said anything racially insensitive, can you just make a list for me? Because I don't know what I said that's racially insensitive. And of course they could not. I said, make a list. And I said, well, make a list. And they could not. It wasn't about that. It was about control. That's what it was about. That's what it's about. And so when you hear someone say that there is white fragility, then you have to consider whether or not that is to control you, to control the narrative. When you hear the term white fragility, you then have to think about for a moment, are you saying this so that you can control me? And that's, that, that's kind of where I'm at. That's kind of where I'm at with this, with this whole thing, with this whole thing. That, that this whole term of white fragility is actually a ploy for control. Because if I can say white fragility and then that makes you melt or you can no longer say what you think, well, then I just controlled the narrative. I just controlled the conversation. And so that's what I said to one of my, one of my team players today or one of my teammates, the team that I was on before I told the person that if you don't apologize, I'm off the team and I'll do this on my own. I'll, I already have, I already set it up to do it. So I said to that person, if you don't apologize for saying that I say racially insensitive things and you can't make a list of those things, then I'm off this team. So if you either come with an apology by the morning or you make a list of things I've said that are racially insensitive or I'm gone, you can do your team and I'll do mine because I still have people on my team. So, so that was the question I had to you guys tonight. And I just wanted to ask a bigger group of people and I'll get some responses on this. Is calling people, is using the term white fragility, is that to control you? Because if you're being fragile because you're white, or maybe you're being black fragile. Did you ever think about that? Maybe you shouldn't be so triggered by what you consider a microaggression. And by the way, you'll never have any idea what that microaggression is. Now, don't get me wrong. If you say like, Get, get down, boy. Like boy is a classic racial slur. Calling someone a boy is not tongue in cheek um, um, being a microaggression. Calling someone boy is literally a racial slur. And if you didn't know that, now you know. It's, it, it's very common to call someone boy and that's a racial slur. Now I didn't know that growing up because I was called boy all the time. What's up playboy? And so, so when I grew up, I found out after doing some research that the term boy was used to, 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 as a racial slur, essentially. But people, this, this person on my team today, because something happened today, something really, really good happened today. Something really, really good. That's why I'm making this video saying, Lethal Lex, you're first. <laughs> you're the first person I'm suing. There's a list, but you're number one, Lethal. You're first. I'm coming after you first. And you'll never guess which state I'm suing you in because I can sue her in any state in America, any place she did damage to my reputation, where she defamed me, where she slandered me. I can sue her in any state I want, any state I want. 
And so I've already picked the state in which I'm going to sue her. Oh, you're in trouble, Lexi. You're in big trouble, Lexi Poo. I told you. I told you don't mess with me. I warned you. You didn't think you thought it was a joke. Because what these people do, these people who are who are fundamentally not good people, th these people, what they do is they set you up to beat you up and then call you a racist. And then that destroys your character and your reputation. It destroys your good name. Okay, I'll see you, dude. I'll see you. Take off, man. I don't care if you come back. I don't give a shit if you watch or not. I don't care. I don't give a shit. I'm not doing this for you, brother. I'm doing this because we have to overturn Terry versus Ohio. And those people disrupted my small business. And so now I have to sue them to make sure I can get some funds to overturn Terry versus Ohio. Okay? I don't care if you leave or not. Take off. Don't come back. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't do this for followers or likes. I don't do this so that you could be my friend. And, and to the supporters who have supported me, I've been very clear with them. Thank you for the support. I cannot promise you that we will align on everything. And I cannot promise I'll take up anything that you ever offer. Not once ever. Never. I just want to be clear about that. Because I have a mission, and it's to overturn Terry versus Ohio. People say, oh, I'm not going to follow you anymore. Then take off and do me the favor so I don't have to address you as I'm trying to speak to people who actually give a shit about this country. And if you don't know, I've had every single family member throughout the history of my, my, my entire family, every single family member that I've had has joined the military. My great-grandfather fought in World War II. My grandfather fought in World War I. My uncle fought in Vietnam. So if you think I don't love America, you are mistaken. Why do you think I made a video about Kyle Rittenhouse and saying he was innocent? He was innocent of murder. Because it's based on the philosophy of law. The philosophy, the fundamentals of our country. That's why I made that video. I didn't make that video because I, I want to embed myself with any group of people because I don't care if you come or not. I don't care. No offense. Don't get offended. Don't get offended. There's other channels. People, there's people who will do... Who, you ever watch someone who's an influencer and they'll go, hey, what content do you want me to make next? What do you want to see me do next? You'll never hear me say that. I don't give a shit what you want to see next. I don't care. There's a goal to overturn Terry versus Ohio. It's right there. It's listed right there. That's the goal. You don't align with me, take a hike. <laughs> I can't be any more clear. I can't be any more crystal clear. So I made a video, I'm making this video today to talk about Lethal Lex. Lethal Lex, go watch her TikTok. Not so she gets more views, but because here's what she does. Here's what she does. I really shouldn't say it, but it doesn't matter because the judge is going to look at it and go, that's the definition of benefit. So here's what benefit is in a, in a, in a, in a slander case. Benefit is this. When you step on someone else and destroy their character based on lies, which is what she did, she had literally invited me to come and speak at her museum in Utah that I've never seen, but she invited me to come there and to speak on the history of institutional racism. And then she made a video about me calling me racist, which is the opposite of her belief. And she did it to cause intentional infliction of emotional distress and to hurt my business and to hurt my way of life. So now what she does is she makes a series of videos and then in the next video, she says, I've grown by 14,000 followers this month. I try to make videos that are interesting and fun and dangerous. No lethal. What you did, honey, is you made a video about me slandering me to benefit yourself. That's called benefit in a court of law. That's called benefit. And you didn't have that privilege. That's another legal term in a defamation case. Okay. Okay. Yeah, she's, 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 she, I think she's a very bad person because of what she's done. I can say these things about her. I can make a video about her because I'm saying the truth. And she talks about white fragility all the time. And then one of my team members today, one of my team members today, when something very good happened today, I can't go into details obviously because I can't, re I can't reveal the, the cards on my chest here, but something very good happened today. Something very good happened today, which makes me be able to say, Lawsuits pending. Lawsuits coming now. Now we're just, now we're just, now we're just this far away. Oh, and so is uh, Aunt Karen. Aunt Karen, 
I think you're going to be second. Talib Kweli, I think I'm going to do you last. Anthony I speak. I think I'm going to do you fourth. I think I'm going to do Jolly third. And I think I'm going to do Good Trouble sixth. I might do Good Trouble second. I can't decide yet. One, one at a time, though. Each one, one at a time goes down for defamation. Because they benefited off of stepping on me and creating a straw man of my character and then poking holes in that straw man. So, so now, when you understand what we can do, what we can do, what you and I can do together, right, is we can tackle the laws that were based on racism that are now being used against all of us. Like the Terry stop. The Terry stop is where the cops stop you based on their suspicion. Now, originally in 1968, that was mostly used against primarily just black people. Sorry, true, true, right? Very few white people got Terry stopped unless you were really poor or there was an uprising in a work facility and then white people got Terry stopped. But very seldom did white people get Terry stopped. And then to Thorne Graham in Graham versus Connor, which is the use of force policy, where the police, any police officer can use the amount of objective reasonable force that they objectively reason is okay, right? So in other words, they can kill you. So the Graham versus Connor is really terrifying, really terrifying, because it says use of force will be determined by the reasonable officer on the scene. And that officer can create in his mind what you did before this that would then justify the amount of force used against you. And if you guys have not looked up Tyler Burris yet, then you have to look him up. Yeah, poor people have always been targeted. Always, always, always. And just, and just so you guys know, granted, black people get more attention, but far more white people are killed by cops. Far more white people are killed by cops. Far more. I think, I think it's 2.4 or 2.6 to 1. Even more than that. I think it's higher. Almost 3. I can't remember the exact statistic. My, my brain's a little jumbled because I came on here a little triggered. Because one of my team members said to me today, because when I said I'm taking down this chick because uh, she pushes this white fragility thing, and it's a form, I think, I think that it, it seems like she's really... Um, I don't want to project any names against her because I can only say things that she said that are the truth. But she continually pushes this narrative of white fragility. And I think that's a way to benefit herself, to raise herself up, and to control the narrative of the conversation. And so I want to talk a little bit about that, right? So, so if you're a person of color, or you're black, or you're brown, maybe, just maybe, maybe it's black fragility. Maybe. Right? Do, do you think about that for a moment? Because if you listen to Lethal Lex's... Um, uh, her, her diatribe, diatribe is a perfect word for that, her diatribe. She goes on to say that white allies are always going to mess up. Well, why is that? Are white allies always going to mess up because they're bad or because of black fragility? And that's the question I have. That's the question. I don't know. What did they just say? Yeah, yeah. It's just... It's just, I, I, I see I, I see how I can do the comments. Oh, she's going to go down. And so is Aunt Karen. Are you guys familiar with Aunt Karen? Aunt Karen is also going down. Aunt Karen, I'm coming after you too. You think I'm not? You shouldn't have made videos about me, babe. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have made videos about me calling me a racist. It was a big mistake. Other people, you might be able to do that because they couldn't prove that they're not a racist. But I made this big chart that took seven months of my life to design. Seven months. And I've taught the history of institutional racism for a year. I got 100 hours of videos teaching the institution of racism. That's the Supreme Court. So you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble. You're in big trouble. You're in trouble. You're in big trouble. So anyway, I wanted to ask a little bit about what you guys thought when you compare, because we have to now ask this question. White, is it white fragility or is it black fragility? We have to ask the question. Because even one of the team members on my team today said something to me. And I was like, and the team member said it to me because it was about control. Because something happened today that put me in a position of control. Now, when my team member had the ball and that person was in control, I was like, yeah, great, awesome. At least you can get it done. And I can't get it done right now because my financing has been cut off. I can't get it done. So one of my team members was putting up the financing to get the legal things done that we have to get done. And so I said to my team member, hey, great. That's one less thing that I have to pay for because I have to come up with the money to pay for these things, right? And it's thousands of dollars. It's not cheap. It's thousands of dollars. 
And then today, when something happened that made it possible that it's not that I can pay for it, but someone's going to come in and assist me, right? Someone, and this is, I'm saying too much already. But then that team member then said to me and came back and said, oh, well, you say racially insensitive things. So then I said, well, make a list. Make a list. What do I say that's racially insensitive? Make a list. Write it out for me. List it for me so that I can read about it. And that person could not do that. And the reason why that person could not do that is because it's just not true. It wasn't about me ever saying racially insensitive things. It was about when they could control what was going on, they were perfectly happy with that. But then when a guy with light colored skin was going to be able to control what was going on, because I'm clearly Colombian. Do you see my name is Chili de Castro? That's not a white name. Mi amo Jose Maria de Castro. That's my name, Jose Maria. That's my name. My friends in school, in elementary school, called me Chili Taco Enchilada Burrito. That was my nickname growing up. They called me Taco. That was the first nickname, was Taco. They called me Taco. I swear to God. The, the, very, first, the very first nickname I got when I moved to Alaska, which is all Texans, by the way. Alaska's full of Texans because that's where the oil pipeline is and that's where the platform is and that's where Prudhoe Bay, Alaska is. So the very first nickname I got when I was five years old and I moved to Alaska was Taco. Taco. The neighbor kids had called me Taco for the first couple of weeks I was in Alaska. And by the time my mom found out about it, she was pissed. I couldn't understand why she was so mad. These people were nice to me. I couldn't understand it. Like, what are you talking about, mom? They have me over to their house. We eat food over there all the time. I play doll. I played, I played dollies when I was a little kid. I played dollies with the neighbor girl. We played dollies back and forth, the Ken and Barbie doll. I loved that, that was great. And they all called me Taco. I swear to God, this is true. Anybody who knows me knows I'm telling the truth, especially my immediate family. Call me Taco. So with that being said, right, and I grew up, and then when I turned 18 and I came to the States, I was raised in kind of a, you know, kind of a, 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 a racist kind of, the, my hometown is not racist, but there's a certain segment of the town that is racist because there's no black people. And so we said the N word out loud and we made fun of black people. We made black jokes, you know, all these things that I would just won't do today, obviously, you know what I mean? And, and I've already said that I, I can't take my past back. So I'm not gonna sit here and be sorry over and over and over. I already did, I already said it. That sucks that I said that as a kid. That sucks I grew up having those uh, racial ideas in my head. But now I've grown up and I've realized those are wrong ideas and I don't share those ideas anymore. I don't believe any of those ideas. So. Yeah, I'm half Colombian. That's correct. That's correct. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to jump on here for a little while because I was so triggered and I didn't have an outlet. I didn't have an outlet to share this with anybody. And so I just wanted to see if I was really far off on my barometer or if I was close because I think that black fragility has to be discussed. I think it has to be talked about. If I, now, and here's the question. If I made a timeline, said defining institutional racism in America, if I created a timeline called defining institutional racism in America, and you want to find a way to be offended by me, you want to find a way, you want to figure out a way that I have said something or done something that's racially insensitive, then maybe that's black fragility. Could it be? Could it be black fragility? If you need to find a way that I've said something that's offensive towards black people and I created a timeline to take on the only racism that we can actually take on which is institutional racism laws we could change those laws right if I created this and I clearly show that Terry v Ohio is based on racism and it's ruining our country and you need to find a reason to be offended by me I think that's black fragility. That's what I think. That's what I think. I think that's you being too fragile. Oh, well, you said this, and so now I'm offended. Yeah, brother. Before we met, before we met, did you know about Terry versus Ohio? Did you know that? Did you know anything about that? Anybody ever told you that? Did Obama talk about Terry? When that professor, what was his name? The professor was arrested in his house on a Terry stop. Did Obama say, man, you know, we should get rid of the Terry stop. Did Obama say that? Did he teach you that? Did Obama talk about that? He was the president of the Harvard Law Review, so he knew about Terry. What was that professor's name? Does anybody know? Can anybody type in that professor's name for me? 
What was that professor's name, the president of the Harvard Law Review? What was his name? When I get emotional and I get my brain triggered, it's kind of, I, I, as you can see, I can't even, I can't even remember the cases. I couldn't even, I can't, I can't even go into detail of Johnson versus McIntosh, which I wrote an entire paper on. So, so I can't remember the details of Johnson versus McIntosh. I can't remember if it was Johnson or McIntosh who was selling the land and then the American government came in and said, no, we're the rightful owners to sell this land. What was the, what was the professor's name? Uh, I was talking about lethal Lex. What was that professor's name? The leap is kind of crazy. That leap is kind of crazy. Yeah, DMT is amazing. I do agree with that. Man, that's what, that's what got me to believe in God again. Before DMT, I didn't believe in God. What was the name though of that, uh, what was the name of that, uh, that professor who got his house raided by the cops when he went home and he couldn't find the key to his house and so he kind of got into his house somehow, right? What was that professor's name, the Harvard professor? It, no, the Harvard professor who was Terry stopped in his own house. They put him in handcuffs in his own house. There's pictures of him on the wall and they put him in handcuffs. What was the name of that professor? And, and Obama had beer gate. You guys can look up Obama beer gate and you can tell me the name of that professor. So just so you guys know, just so you guys know, um, yeah, just, just so you guys know, uh, you know, I haven't ever, I haven't said anything racially insensitive, nothing. Now I admit that I did kind of get those guys going a little bit after they called me a racist because there's no coming back from it what Tlaib the dweeb did, there's no coming back from that. He's going to have, there's going to be a certain percentage of people, third party who he disseminated the information to, which is the, the, one of the five points of defamation, that Tlaib the dweeb, that he disseminated to them and called me a racist, that those people will always believe I'm a racist. He did a lifetime of damage to me. And Tlaib, you, you're next, bro. You're, I'm suing you, dude. So, so what was that? What was that professor's name, though? The professor who did the beer gate. Can anybody tell me that? What was that professor's name? O Obama beer gate. Harry Henry. What was his name? It's gonna drive me crazy. I know you guys are sitting at a computer. Someone just tell me that professor's name. It's driving me nuts. Uh, Obama did beer gate. Not worth the fight. No, no, no. It is. It is worth the fight. What are you talking about? It's not your reputation and your name that's been destroyed. It's not you that had all your platforms destroyed. It's not you that lost all the financing and the small business that you had created, was it? Did you see your mother cry? Did you see your life destroyed? Did you see any of that? Did you make a video for Jalen Goodwin and all the comments on there were calling you a racist instead of focusing on Jalen Goodwin, the kid who had been murdered? Did that happen to you, brother? If that didn't happen to you, then we're not walking in the same shoes and you can't understand what happened to me. Gate is it, was his name was his name was his name uh, Professor Gates. Mm. But that was his name, Professor Gates, and they had Beer Gate. They had Beer Gate. Obama had Beer Gate. Did 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 Obama talk about Terry? Did Obama talk about Terry stops then? Did did Obama talk about did Obama talk about uh, uh, did Obama mention Terry versus Ohio? Did Barack Obama, who was president of the Harvard Law Review? Did he ever talk about it? He never did. He never did. And how come he never did? How come he never did? Because Barack Obama is an establishment elitist. He, he doesn't care about you and me, the common people. He only cares about his agenda. He didn't care about you or I. He cared about droning people to death in the Middle East. And he droned over 1.1 million people to death. Sometimes killing entire wedding parties to get one target. And how much good did that do us here in America? It did Raytheon a lot of good. It did the, it did the military machine a lot of good. Did you do you are any good? No, no. Matter of fact, that was when I was going to join the military in the early 90s. And the reason I didn't join the Navy is because we were going into an oil war. And a lot of my buddies died. People I knew died from, from the inhaling the, the, bad, the bad lung stuff. I mean, from, the, from breathing in the, the falling oil from the sky. My, my cousin served over there in Operation... Uh, uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom, or whatever it was called. Henry Louis Gates Jr., thank you so much. So, so did, did Barack, did he, did he bring it up? Did Barack bring up Terry v. Ohio? I mean, I mean, I mean, be honest with me. How many people here, just, just the 25, 30 people here, how many people here knew that the linchpin of the death machine that allows cops to kill you and the linchpin of the prison system where they can take you to jail based on their suspicion. How many of you guys knew it was Terry versus Ohio? How many of you guys knew that? 
How many people knew it? Like, you know what? I clearly have identified that it's Terry. Did you, were you like, yes, I clearly have identified it. Did you go, you know, I studied this for 20 years and now I've been able to clearly pinpoint that it's Terry versus Ohio. Okay. So, you know, 0%, that's exactly correct. And the only reason, just so you know, remember, I am not Einstein. I am no smarter than anybody here. I guarantee you, if we did an IQ test, almost everybody in here would be equal to me or better or, or maybe a notch below. But nobody, I would not be superiorly intelligent to anybody in this room. I mean, maybe one or two people, but also one or two people would be superior intelligent to me. It's, just, it's a scale, you know, and I would be somewhere in the middle, right? But when you get no-knock rated from the 1983 case of Illinois versus Gates, when, th when this case allows you to be no-knock rated based on bullshit information that uh, a washed-up baseball player told the cops and told them I was a drug dealer, and this is what allowed cops to no-knock raid me, it was only a matter of time before I traced Illinois versus Gates back to Terry versus Ohio. And by the way, once you start to do legal study, man, you know, all of the websites make it really easy. Matter of fact, Wikipedia makes it really easy. If you go to Wikipedia and you put in Illinois versus Gates right here, and you put in Illinois versus Gates, you will see the case precedent of Illinois versus Gates on the bottom, on the bottom. So, so that's, 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 that's the only reason that I know this information more than you do. It has nothing to do with me being smarter, not even close. Not even close. <laughs> I wish I was as smart as some of these actual smart people. I wish I was, you know, I really do. I mean, when you listen to Noah Feldman talk, when you listen to Noah Feldman, you go, man, that guy's like legitimately smart, <laughs> right? That's, it's just the truth. When you listen to Noah Feldman talk, when you read Ian Milheiser's book, when you read, he's written two books that I know of. If you read one, of, or, or one or two of Ian Milheiser's books, you read someone, you're like, man, this guy's actually really a genius, you know? So it just so happened I got no-knock rated. And that, that is what caused me. And as you can see from the video I made earlier at the border crossing, I don't want anybody to tell me what to do. I, I don't want you to tell me what to do. People who have supported me along the mission, I don't let them tell me what to do. I don't want to be told what to do. I don't want to tell you what to do. It's just the way it is. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm happy I was able to share the information. And now I, I got I got a feller on here. Uh, uh, Mike uh, Micah sent me some information um, of uh, of the Hinkle case, and I'm reading that now. But Supreme Court needs to be elected. I did a podcast last night with uh, Justice uh, Man of Justice 007, and he you know he had the exact opposite opinion of I did. He thought that senators should be appointed by the House of Representatives, and I said respectfully we agree to disagree. You know, because he said it takes away states' power. And I said, well, if you give all the states the power, we'd still have slavery. Half this country would still have slavery. And I don't think I'm wrong about that. I respectfully disagree with him, you know. He's for justice. He's for liberty. He's for America. So we align on that. But we don't align that we should, we should elect the Supreme Court. He didn't think we should. Well, I disagree. I disagree. I've studied the 115 justices. I've studied those people. A lot of them are white supremacists. And that just sucks. It sucks that that's what our country has been based upon. And it, I mean, like I said, we, we go back to, to Johnson versus McIntosh and Justice John Marshall writes the opinion in Johnson versus McIntosh where he goes on and on and on. The opinion is so long where he talks about how, you know, the doctrine of discovery grants us this right to have control of all the inhabitants and all the land. It's absolutely racist. It's absolutely racist as fuck. Hey, Jeremy, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Jeremy. Uh, uh, just, uh, uh, you know, I was speaking earlier about, about support and supporters and justice is one of my supporters. And I, I've been as clear as I can with everybody. Look, I have a mission here. I have a mission. <laughs> you can join me or not. You know, I, I've been as clear and as honest as I can with people. Do I need your support? Yes. Do I need to sell more posters? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. You have no idea. The other day I sold two or three posters. I was ecstatic, right? But, you know, I can't change the mission. I can't stop what I'm doing. And these lawsuits hopefully will garner some money. Will garner some money so that we can continue the mission. Because it's really all I care about, you know? I don't got a wife. I don't got any kids. 
So appreciate your support. Thanks a lot. Appreciate your support. Thanks a lot. I'll, and I'll throw this in. You guys, you guys are more than welcome. So this is, these are the posters. I got three different posters. One's a digital poster you download. You can print out at home. If you don't have the 20 bucks, I give it to you for free. I sent off like to seven the other day. I sent 20 out today. Uh, and these are, these are my coffee funds right here. So you guys get the poster on deletelaws.com. That's with a Z at the end of it. And these are my cup of coffee funds because everybody's pretty broke in America. So, so if you want to contribute a cup of coffee, that's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I will be, I will be, uh, I guarantee you this, when we win a bunch of money from Tlaib the Dweeb and Lethal Lex and T Nathan and I Speak, the people I'm suing and Jolly suing you and Good Trouble suing you. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. I'm suing you. Bank on. Don't, I'm not joking. I'm not kidding. It's not funny to me. It literally makes me unlikable because I get so pissed off about what these people have done. Right? So... I don't mean to be unlikable, but you, we're going to court. Let's see how you do in court. I think I can prove the five points of defamation. That's what I think I can prove. And I think that you're going to have to have a good defense team. That's what I think. I think you're going to, I, I think you're going to have to have a good defense team. And if you don't have a good defense team, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. Yeah, it's, it's coming. It's coming. You can tell them. You can tell them. I'm suing you. <laughs> Lethal Lex is the title of this video. Go watch her videos. She talks about uh, white fragility. Maybe there's black fragility too. Maybe there is. Seems like there is. Seems like there is. When you're offended about, if I offend you and you can find me being racially insensitive and I'm not above, I'm not above criticism, but I've defined institutional racism. I made a freaking timeline about it. I've railed about institutional racism for six months, screamed and yelled and ranted and raved about the history of institutional racism in our country. And you, you, you find fault with me. You find that I've said something that's racially insensitive. Maybe that's black fragility. Could it be? I mean, could it be? Could, I mean, could it be? If you're finding something wrong with the guy that points out the reason why, you know, there's two and a half million people in a dungeon. If, if you're telling me that, that I, I pinpointed that Terry B. Ohio mostly locks up people of color, mostly people of color, and you want to be offended by me? You got the problem, bud. That's called black fragility. And why, why am I pissed off? Because just today I posted a video on TikTok and the very first comment is, you're a racist, we haven't forgot. That was the, go look at the video. The very, I, I posted a video on my main account on TikTok, I've got like five accounts. And the very first comment is, you're a racist, we haven't forgot. How? How am I a racist? I'm Colombian. And in high school and college, I beat up people who said racist shit in front of me. <laughs> it just drives me nuts. It just drives me nuts. I am. I'm suing him. 100% I'm suing him. 100%. But you guys, I, you know, Lethal Lex in particular, you go watch her channel. Oof. You think I get mad and I get unlikable. Go watch her. She, to me, she's unlikable every time I watch her. She's unlikable every time I watch her. Just an unlikable person as far as I'm concerned, as far as looking at her. And by the way, that's not slander. That's a matter of opinion. So now if I said something that was, uh, so let's, let's just take, a, let's just take, a, you know, my grandfather who's passed on, passed on this year. He served in the Navy. This is the flag that was draped over his coffin that I stand in front of today. So if I said that, you know, my grandfather poisoned seven kids and killed them. That would be the definition of slander because that can be proven to be false. My grandfather did not poison seven kids. As a matter of fact, my grandfather who had 10 kids of his own took in dozens of children who were homeless throughout his entire life, raised other people's kids. So I just wanna put that caveat on my grandfather's name because I just, I wanted to say an example of slander, but then, oh, but I, I have no idea oh, because one of the team members today, when someone called me and said, hey, Chili, we may have a way to sue these people through this lawyer, and that lawyer's gonna come in for you because he believes in the mission of Overturn Terry, then all of a sudden, the other people on my team no longer had control, and so then they said to me today, we, you know, one of, the, one of the black people said on my team that I said racially insensitive things, and I said, okay, go ahead and list it. List what they are. L list the things of racially insensitive things that I've said. And they couldn't. And so I said, I'll accept your apology by the morning 
or I'm out. I'm off this team and I'll, I'll do my own thing because I, I'm not going to have that. If you're going to be so sensitive that after all the work I've done, well, then we should part. We should part. We should part ways, you know, and we'll leave the trust right here on the table. Notice I've never said that person's name. I never break trust. I never say anybody's name out loud ever. I never say anybody's name out loud that I have a private confidential conversation with ever. There's people who I have a private confidential conversations with who have betrayed me during this process over the past month. I have not said their names out loud and I won't. I'm simply a man of principle and I won't do it. I won't. As, as mad as I am at a few people and I've, I've literally ended friendships, I, I still won't say their names of who they are because I don't think that's proper. When we share love and we share trust in that moment of, of when we love and trust one another, it, when you violate my trust, that's okay. Now that friendship has come to an end, but I'm not gonna disintegrate my own personal values by betraying the trust and love we had at one time. And one of those people in Los Angeles is a major influencer. And I literally told him, I hate to say him or her, but it's a him. I literally sent him a text yesterday and said, uh, he's, I, our friendship has ended. Our bridge is burned forever. So don't ever think you can come back because he never can. He can never be my friend again. Unfortunately, you know what I mean? Because when that great big uh, guy, Jolly Ginger, when he made a video about me saying, I've been exposed as a racist. I called our mutual friend and said, dude, you need to check this guy. And instead he said, oh bro, I don't know, man, it was cringe. And I said, our friendship's over. Thanks bro, you know? And that's just the way I am. I'm super hardcore. I'm super hardcore. I'm super hardcore. <laughs> Nothing's gonna deter me. Nothing. I swear to God, I'll be standing there the day Terry's overturned. Some of you will be there too. Some of you will be right there with me, I guarantee it. Some of you will be along for this ride, 100%. Because I never forgot how I got there. And there are people who, who broke off from me when the, when the movement against me started on TikTok. And they, you know, I literally had to tell them, you know, they, they just said, you know, I had to end a lot of friendships over them wanting me to fall on my knees and say I was sorry. For what? What am I sorry for? For to leave the dweeb saying I'm a racist? I'm not sorry. He's a loser. T to leave. <laughs> Talib's got some dough. This is going to cost you the most financially, Talib. It's going to cost you. T. Roy is still here. T. Roy has been with me since the beginning. Thank you, T. Roy. Oh, by the way, your, your poster shipped. The people who ordered posters, they shipped. They shipped. You're going to get a UPS tracking number from me tomorrow. Your poster shipped. T. Roy, your poster shipped. T. Roy is not rich. He still bought a $99 poster for me. I make about 20 or 30 bucks. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that, man. It made a big deal to me. Because when I sold three posters, I made a hundred bucks. I was stoked, stoked, stoked. Like, I, you know, <laughs> you know, no, TikTok has suppressed my channels. TikTok has suppressed. So the people who are coming in, the people who I talked to today, not only are we suing these people, we're suing the social media companies. We're suing Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We're suing all three of them. We're suing them. Lawsuits are coming, boys. Lawsuits are coming. You're not allowed to do the things you're doing. It's called censorship. It's illegal. So thanks T. Roy, I appreciate that support. Yeah, if you guys wanna get a poster, let me do one more promo and I'll get out of here because I just came on here. Here's what I find, here's, here, here's what I find just so you guys know. You know, talking about the no-knock raid on TikTok, if, if T. Roy knows, the first few times I broke down the no-knock raid, I cried. I cried in front of thousands of people, literally. I mean, the, the YouTube channel for me is smaller on live, but on TikTok, there's a thousand, two thousand people in the room very often. And you can ask T. Roy, it's true. And so, so the first time I laid out that no knock raid and I talked about what I went through, I sat there in front of the camera and I fucking cried. I sobbed. I sobbed. I cried my eyes out. And everybody saw that I just there's no point in lying, you know? It hurt. It hurt. It hurts now even kind of bringing it back up. But when I get triggered now and I get emotional, I find that if I come on here and I talk about it out loud, like even Justice was saying to me the other day, man, I just watched your video and you seem frustrated and you seem bunged up. And he's right, I did. But now after I've come on live this last three or four days, every day coming on live for an hour, coming on live for an hour, I feel a lot better. <laughs> I feel, I mean, I still got this shoulder pinch thing going on right here, but I'm also working out like a demon in case someone attacks me on the street. I wanna be ready in case one of these people attacks me. I don't want to get beat up. That would really make me feel bad. 
getting my ass kicked would really make, I haven't been beat, I haven't been beat up since I was 12. Now, when I fought, you know, Ken, uh, Ken Shamrock, obviously, when he was world champion, obviously I got my ass kicked, all right? <laughs> obviously Ken Shamrock beat the shit out of me. You know, one time Guy Metzger caught me with a roundhouse kick, boom, right inside the, the head, knocked me senseless. You know, obviously in the cage when you're training with world champions, I got my ass kicked, okay? But I haven't had my ass kicked on the street since I was 12. And I, I, I just can't, I can't take that. I can't take it. So the last few times I've come on here and I've just kind of bared my soul and talked about what the things that are got me in my chest to get my chest bunged up, right? I feel a lot better. I feel a lot better. So Justice, if you're watching this, uh, my friend uh, Jay and S in Ohio who are big supporters of mine, thank you guys so much. Um, you know, uh, man, I'm better, dude. I know that you saw that first video I made when I hadn't been on in a long time and I tried to go on live three or four times on TikTok and my accounts got suspended, you know, I feel a lot better if I just talk about it, if I just get it out. Like this thing with the black fragility. I was thinking in my head after watching all of Lethal Lexus talking about white fragility all the time. Well, what about black fragility? If you're finding a way to be offended by me, the guy who laid this shit out, well then dude, everybody's gonna offend you. You're gonna be offended by everybody and everything. There's nothing a white person's gonna be able to say, oh, and then Lethal Lex makes a video and she lists Tizient. And she lists my dude, M-Y-D-O-O-D. And she goes, yeah, guys, um, there's a beef here with these guys. And if they make a civil rights video, don't tag me in it. Is that because they're white men lethal? Just a question. Is it because they're white? Is that why you, you have a beef with them? If you haven't noticed, Lethal Lex has a problem with anybody who's not black. And that's just an observation, but it's true. So that's not slander. <laughs> There's five points to slander. You have to understand what they are. And I don't have time to teach a class on it. Matter of fact, I'm still learning. So how could I possibly teach a class on it? Okay. So you guys, thanks a lot. Listen, if you guys want to show support, buy a poster. Even the $20 poster, it helps me so much. Because $20 is a digital download. It doesn't cost me anything to ship it to you. Because you just get it in your email. And if you don't have the 20 bucks, just get it from me either way. So you have it. You know what I'm saying? Because some people don't have 20 bucks, dude. There was a supporter of mine who lived in his car. He lived in his car in Missouri. And he sent me like $2 for a cup of coffee. And of course, as soon as I get your email address, I send you everything. There's no delay. I just send you everything that I sell because it's digital. It doesn't cost me anything to click it other than time. And one of my supporters lived in his car. He sent me a $2 cup of coffee. And then I got him on the phone one day and we were talking and he told me he's living in his car. Uh, I said, why are you sending me two bucks if you live in your car? Because man, I believe in the mission. And then, by the way, that was one of the guys who, who left. He left when uh, to lead branded me a racist. Yeah, really hurt. That one, that one really hurt. There was one night in Missouri where I cried, where I sobbed myself to sleep. I remember. Yeah, pretty vivid. I sobbed until I, until I passed out. Like, you know one of those cries where you're like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? One of those cries. I had one of those cries in Missouri. When there was, I'm staying in these people's houses and I don't know them and I'm getting death threats and they're already weary and they got a kid who was killed by the cops and I'm there to help their kid, but all the attention is what a racist I am. And there was one night in Missouri where I just sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. And it was because of that kid who was sleeping in his car that had sent me $2 for a cup of coffee. And then he turned on me and I just, I just broke down, man. I, I broke down, I broke down one of those uncontrollable, like when you get your ass kicked by Ken Shamrock and you're leaving the gym and you, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, <laughs> you can't get the air in, you know? And that's like, like when you get a beat down like that, uh, that was one of the cries I did in Missouri. So it was, it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough. It was pretty tough. It was pretty tough. Yeah. It's just tough thinking about it. I don't want to think about it too much. So anyway, listen, if you guys can support by getting a digital poster, uh, I was going to raise the price to 25 bucks, but you know what? Yeah, you know. But yeah, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Because surely if you can afford 20, you can afford 25. But yeah. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks for letting me vent. I appreciate it. Um, if you guys have any legal questions, don't hesitate to drop, to drop, a, uh, to drop. Uh, but you guys, by the way, always use my email if you're going to send me any kind of documents or anything because my eyes are bad. Watch your brand. <laughs> Thank you for being a loyal uh 
follower, man, for, for being a loyal, I, I can't stand that name. Thank you for being a loyal teammate, dude. Thank you for being a loyal teammate. I appreciate that. Because when he says watch your brand, what he's saying is yesterday I talked about someone who told me that they should worry about their brand. If they associate with me, it might hurt their brand. Yeah. I don't smoke weed anymore. I would say go put that in your pipe and smoke it. Because, you know, I had to quit smoking weed because I can't drive around the country and have any chance of the police being able to arrest me for bullshit. That's why I quit smoking weed. And I just quit smoking weed in the middle of October. So I guess it's the end of November now and I haven't, now I'm completely past it. Now I don't have any cravings for weed. I don't wish I had a bowl. Like I just, I, I just passed it. And all the little white chunks, anybody ever quit smoking weed before? Have you quit smoking weed before, anybody? The little white chunks that come up, you, you, get, you get like these little tiny, I don't even know what that is. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? If you've ever quit smoking weed, which I've quit smoking weed several times in my life for like a year at one point, two years at another point, a year one time. Because once I get in my mind that I need to quit smoking weed, I take a break. But all the white chunks are now done. I no longer, are little tiny, it's really gross to be honest with you. I shouldn't even be talking about it. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So hey, Justice, if you're tuning in, man, I'm not as frustrated anymore, man. It's not loogies. It's it's literally like this little white chunk of 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 like stuff that comes up from from quitting smoking weed. And by the way, I was smoking weed like you know. Well, I guess I was only smoking because as I was studying the law when I was in LA and West Hollywood, um, I had hit this point where I just realized I really cannot be I cannot be high, and and then retain the amount of knowledge that I'm that I'm learning. Because I mean, I spent, I spent half the day studying and half the day um, creating videos. And I gotta thank my, my financier, Jeff Lloyd. Jeff Lloyd. Uh, his, his, his Instagram is J Lloyd Sold. J L L O Y D S O L D. If you guys know his Instagram, you can go by his Instagram and, and tell him Chili said thanks for everything. He, he's a conservative, he's a Republican. He voted for Trump twice. He financed the film, The Terry Era. Put $100,000 in my hand. Here you go, Chili. Make a movie. I spent every dime making that movie. Every dime. Every single dime he gave me, I spent on that production. I took no pay. Just, I mean, just to be clear, just so you guys know. I took zero pay for that documentary with the Pop Brothers in it that's on the first video on my channel. I didn't get paid a dime. I got paid, here's what I got paid. Enough time to study and create the wall that I did. And that's by Jeff Lloyd, J. Lloyd Sold. J-L-L-O-Y-D-S-O-L-D on uh, Instagram and uh, on Facebook, it's Jeff Lloyd and you can find him by going J. Lloyd Sold. Same thing, you can find Jeff Lloyd. And he is an amazing human being, really. Voted for Trump twice, he won't vote for him a third time because of the insurrection thing. Um, so he won't support Trump again for, the, for this next time, as I wouldn't either. I'm definitely not voting for a Democrat this year. I haven't voted Democrat or Republican since, since 2008, but I'm definitely not voting for a Democrat right now. They're the ones stripping away our liberty right now. They're the ones pushing for a, for, a, for a mandate. So I'm not voting for a Democrat. I'm absolutely not gonna vote for a Democrat. I won't do it. I can't see myself, unless, unless Tulsi runs, I can't really see Jeff, L-L-O-Y-D, and then sold. So his name's Jeff Lloyd, but then his, his, his Instagram is J Lloyd sold, because he sells real estate for a living. That's what he does. J Lloyd sold. I haven't voted Republican or Democrat since 2008, since Barack Obama, and I campaigned for Barack Obama. I would have voted for Bernie, and then when he said vote for Hillary, <laughs> we're done. We're done, dude. We're done. If I ever say to you, if I ever say to you, well, you know, we can overturn this case instead of Terry, you should leave me and never speak to me again. Never speak to me again, because I'm a fraud. If I go, oh, well, we can overturn this case instead, well, now, if we did overturn Carol, that would overturn Terry anyway, eventually. So I would, I, would, I would take that, but I wouldn't stop against Terry. I would still go after Terry with all that I am forever and ever, right? So I don't know what Jason said, but I'll try to take a look. Yeah, I agree. Listen, uh, you know, listen, I was a big supporter of Kaepernick for a long time and I still support his basic idea that black lives do matter. But since I started this channel, since I started coming out in the public on June 19th, I've always said I do not support the Black Lives Matter organization. I've always said that. 
And the people who, who watched the channel on TikTok, when they heard me say it, I said, I support Black Lives Mattering, but I do not support an organization that gives tens of millions of dollars to the Democratic Party. I don't. I don't. Why would I? What, what Are reparations on the Democratic platform? No. No. And have we created a black criminal class in America with Terry versus Ohio? Yes. Did we, did we end the social contract? Did we end natural rights? You have natural right to life, liberty, and property. You have a natural right to life, liberty, and property. And this is John Locke's philosophy of natural law. You have a natural right to it. So in 1926 in Corrigan versus Buckley, so in 1926 in Corrigan versus Buckley, the, the government cut black people out of economic prosperity. If you don't know it, now you know. That's a fact. So the, 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 the entire concept of natural law was, was, was not included for people of color in 1926. And the number one way you get money from your family is through your house. So if we cut black people out of economic prosperity, for a hundred years, well then of course, of course, we have to do something to repair that. It shouldn't be money, it should be land. And they sh we should create something so that we don't have a black criminal class that's targeted by Terry. It's really complicated, so who am I? I'm just one guy, but that's just where we are. That's just where we are, that's just where we are. You know, we created this, we created this. The reason why you have so many black people in prison is because they were cut out of making any money and then they were targeted by the police. I mean, they, they were cut out of making any money and then they were targeted by the police. You can't be any clearer. I mean, these are facts. These are historical facts. I'm not proud of this. My skin's white, okay? Terry Corrigan. So if you don't know it, now you know. If you don't like it, maybe that's your white fragility. <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 So I'm. I'm. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just trying to be truthful, because saying the truth goes against me. <laughs> My family's been here since the Revolutionary War. <laughs> So that means that somewhere along the line, my family remained silent. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. That's not true. I'm so sorry. I'm not, my family, my family was poor. So we were struggling to eat. My family has been poor since the beginning. So we were never a part of the elites who did this to black people. I, I, we ne my grandfather who fought in World War II, my grandfather who fought in World War I, we were poor. So we were never a part of this. And my grandfather, the only black kid in my town, my grandfather adopted. I told you how great of a man my grandfather was. He adopted the only black kid in my town. And when they called him an enter in front of me, I beat the shit out of them. I beat the shit out of them. I took the suspension. <laughs> so, so, you know, you're not gonna call my family member the N word in front of me and I'm a, a, state, a, state, you know, a state level wrestler. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna listen to that crap. Sorry, you're gonna face, you're gonna get the whip. So they got it. Yep, 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 yep. Anyway. Oh wow, I've been on for a long time. I've been on for a long time. Thanks for letting me get this off my chest. Uh, you guys are more than welcome. Tell Lethal Lex. Lethal, I heard what you did. You benefited. You're getting sued, baby. You're getting sued. Oh, I'm sorry, am I being misogynistic by calling you baby? You called me a racist. So, you know, hey, I guess, touche, babe. Touche, Lexi. You're going to court. Guess where I'm suing you, Lexi? Guess which courtroom I'm suing you in? Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Oh, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Yeah, if you guys, do you guys have any questions or anything about anything that you guys wanna go over? I'm gonna try to go to bed a little early. I guess, I literally only sleep four or five hours a night. I slept for six hours last night. I slept for seven hours the night before. I am so well rested. It is incredible. It is an amazing feeling. Watch your brand. Watch your brand, Jason. Watch your brand. You don't wanna hurt your brand. <laughs> I, and by the way, the person that, told, that, that said that to me, I have so much respect for that person. I still do. 
That person is, is seriously an intelligent human being. I have a lot of respect for that person who said that he had to worry about, uh, he or she had to worry about his brand, had to worry about their brand. I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. But then again, you know, I am, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit of a bull in trash shop, to be honest. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bend. I'm not going to in any way, shape or form compromise my own principles. Even if people abandon me, I'm still not going to compromise my principles. That's not going to happen under any circumstances. I don't give a shit what anybody thinks. Maybe I lose followers. <laughs> I'm so worried, you know. I'm not doing it. Hey, love you too, Andy. Thanks, man. And, and Andy, don't break yourself, dude. Don't break yourself, dude. Just whatever you can afford, man, and I'll give you everything for free, dude. Because the, the poster's 20, the ebook's 20, that's 40 bucks. If you don't got the 40 bucks, dude, just buy me a cup of coffee and I'll give you everything. I'll give it to you for free, dude. And you don't even have to do that. I'll give it to you for free anyway. So don't hurt yourself if you don't have any money, dude. Really, don't do that. You know, keep yourself in good financial position. If it's going to hurt you in any way, I'll give it to you for nothing, dude. 100%. Don't worry about it. You know, there's people out there who do have some cash who will contribute or donate or buy the poster or buy the big poster. You know, and I, I make 20 or 30 bucks on, the big, on either poster. So, you know, that's how much I make the same amount of money on the digital poster that I do if you buy the big poster, but the big poster you put in your house. And that's a big deal to me. That's why I got the price down to where it is. So, you know what I mean? But don't hurt yourself financially for me, dude. You know, really don't. I do appreciate that though. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, listen to you guys. Uh, I got nothing but love for y'all. Thank you guys so much for letting me, letting me bloviate. Let me talk my, my, my face off. I feel a lot better. I feel a lot better. When I came on this, I was pissed. I was pissed. I was, I was bunged up to the neck. I was so mad. I was so mad. I was so mad. Andy, send me an email. My email address is on my website. Um, don't hurt yourself financially, brother. You know, really. And uh, thank I was so mad. I feel so much better. I feel so much better. I feel a lot better. Don't hurt your brand, Jason. Don't hurt your brand, bro. Don't hurt your brand. <laughs> I still have a lot of respect for that person who said that to me. I understand that that person is worried about their followers or whatever not liking them and they may lose money because YouTube is kind of a business. I get that. So uh, appreciate you guys. Uh, I'll be on tomorrow. I'll be on tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be in Vegas. So I'll be in Vegas tomorrow. I'll be in Vegas for Thanksgiving with my family. I'm looking forward to that. And you guys enjoy your Thanksgiving too. Your poster ship, T. Roy, your poster ships tomorrow. The uh, two other people who bought the $99 poster for me the other day, your poster ships tomorrow from Image Square Printing in Santa Monica. Your poster ship tomorrow. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited about it. I'll be in Vegas. I'll be in uh, Vegas. If you want to know where I'm going to be, send me a, a message. Send me a message because I can't, obviously, I cannot put it on YouTube. I mean, I got a death threat yesterday. Someone told me they're going to kill me. Yesterday. Yesterday, someone told me they were going to kill me. Yesterday. So I can't say out loud where I'm going to be, but I'll be in Vegas. I'll be in Vegas or around the area tomorrow. So I got to be careful. You know, I just got to be careful. And by the way, you know, make sure if you, if you come to kill me, make sure that you, I don't see you coming because you have a rude awakening, you know? So, um, uh, yeah, send me your email address, Andy. And thanks for your support. I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. I do appreciate it, man. Really, really, really. And then maybe you can buy me that cup of coffee in real life, dude. We'll sit down and have a cup of coffee. You know, maybe I'll buy you a cup of coffee. How about that? All right, I gotta get out. Thank you guys. I'll talk to you soon and I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Happy, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Later.